everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about well what it's about is we're going to look at oh whoops i lent on the space bar by mistake uh what is it about well it's about echoes specifically dub echoes now what do i mean by that surely you know what i mean don't you well, maybe at least tell you what I think it means. So I've always kind of regarded the dub echo as more than just an effect that you stick on something in order to create some space or indeed echoes. I've always kind of regarded it as more uh, an actual instrument in which to play with space and textures. And whilst I primarily first heard about it from listening to dub reggae records, I think you can kind of do it in any music, especially dancey stuff. And I have indeed heard it in lots of different types of music. And what I want to talk about is how you can indeed try and sort of perform with it, whether it's like in the studio or live. It's something I quite like to do when I play live shows is how you can kind of form this kind of relationship between the music and where you're sending the music and how you can kind of ride and manipulate and surf <laughs> like where you've just sent the music to, which in most cases, might just be an echo with some filtering on it. But I intend to explore it a little bit further in Ableton. But you can, of course, do this in any software or hardware you like. You just need to have a few essential bits. Although doing it in a computer is slightly easier because then you can have like as many echoes as you want, reverbs, delays and stuff. So earlier I prepared this little drum beat here, which is a little bit dubby. And I've put some... I just sort of played in some slices here. Thought the snare was very good. And I've just given some of these little shuffly bits a bit of chance so they don't happen all the time. Quite good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, you can actually see I've already done this. I've sent it to return A. And... Now, some of you might be thinking, you know what, I've, just, I've got my echo, like I've got my echo here, like, you know, I've got like this one and, you know, this one does everything I want, you know, and that's great. Yeah, this does actually do lots of good things. It's got a reverb in it. You can choose if you want the reverb pre or post the delay or in the feedback loop. It's got a filter. It's got modulation. It's got all that stuff. Fine, but we're going to go a little bit further than that. So I'm going to start by just putting a vanilla delay on this and seeing what happens nothing right now because this is turned down so that needs to go back to its default value and as i send this first we'll turn the dry way up as i send this into this return track it's going to send it through this echo there we go and then when i pull that send down it still echoes a little bit, but eventually dies out because I've stopped sending audio to that. It would be quite as good if I put that delay just on here because then you could, you've only got the dry wet. Which is quite good, actually. In, in some ways, that's actually quite good as well because then you can kind of kill the delay. But um, we're not going to do that because what we're going to do is we're going to get mad with feedback loops. What do you mean, feedback loops? Well... If you didn't know this, and I'm sure you do if you've seen this channel, because I've done it so many times, is you can enable the sends on the return tracks. Enable send, enable all sends. I'm going to turn that on. And what that means I can do is that I can actually feed that track back into itself and create all kinds of mayhem. Now, this is just the best thing in the world, whether you're working in a computer or outside in the real world. Um, but it's incredibly dangerous because feedback will literally destroy everything. <laughs> your speakers, your ears, your relationship with your audience. You know, you've got to keep on top of it. So we're going to put a limiter here. And we might even put some compression on later because that can be fun as well. So with the dry wet all the way up and the feedback all the way down, let's start with this. I'm going to feed this back, this echo back into itself. I'm going to turn this send up here. So now I've got a single repeat. But if I start to send this back into itself. It's 
kind of just goes on forever. There's just no stopping that now unless I pull that all the way down. Now, if I had the feedback up on the delay and I did that, that could potentially be pretty catastrophic. Let's have a listen. Okay, that's not the nicest sounding thing in the world, but you can hear what's happening. It's basically feeding back into itself indefinitely and creating this madness. So that is where the feedback loop happens. We send audio into the return track, which goes through a load of effects, and then we feed that back into itself to create this eternal loop. And it doesn't really stop there because whilst there are very good echoes out there, and perhaps you've got one that you always gravitate towards that have got all of these interesting things going on in the process of the delay. I would be willing to bet my money on it that there's only a few of them that let you tap in to the feedback loop. And indeed, I was looking at a, a modified WEM copycat on eBay the other day, which someone had fitted in an insert point into the can't quite remember they'd fitted some sort of insert point in insert point in so that you could plug in other things that get worked into the delay network anyway that was some ebay shit we're going to do it right now here in ableton live and the way that we're going to do that is by simply just chucking more effects on this chain so this is where we're going to mostly be working in conjunction with how much we're sending audio to the return and how much we're returning the return into the return. <laughs> so let's actually just start with a simple low pass filter. And let's put a low pass filter after the delay. Pull that back, bring that back in. Bring the echo back in. And start to feed that back. Oh my goodness me, it's all gone to shit. Look how red that is. So, it's still going though. I can bring it back. Although there's not much to bring back because <laughs> it's pretty low past. So... Maybe let's swap that out for a high pass and see how we get on with that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we, let's take two of these. Still going. There's still something there. No, it's gone. <laughs> Let's take two of these. Let's have a low pass and a high pass. And we'll put one here. It's still going. It's coming back. The dub is coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back to get us. You can ride these things forever if you find a sweet spot. Oh, it's a little much though. It's coming back. not gone you can bring it back no it's gone <laughs> okay so they no it's coming back it's coming back okay so let's stop that for a that's only just the beginning so your good old-fashioned dub echo is 
echo on a return track, send your music to that return track. And then on the old consoles, probably what they did was is that they would patch it. They wouldn't patch it into the return on the console. They'd probably patch it back into a normal track so that they could send it back. I've been doing stuff like this myself on my Mackie and it's loads of fun. And they were probably using filters and maybe, you know, spring reverbs and all that sort of stuff. But we're in 2023. We can chuck like a whole load of stuff in here. Why don't we like put a bit crusher in there? Let's pull Redux in and put Redux like in between the low pass and the high pass and just see what happens when we start to ride this echo. Digital ghosts living in our in our song now. got my little APC mini plugged in right now which I can use quite nicely to ride some of these sends because there's a setting on it where you can have the faders go to the sends so I can actually well no I've got it on volume right now so if I set it to send I can send that back into itself leave that send up and pull that one down with the fader so now we've got like kind of five bit dub echo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's time for a celebration guzzle. But we're really not done got so much to cover. track is that you can just kill it suddenly just kill it kill that track and you know you can let it cool down see that's just that eventually that's going to cool down especially if i pull that send down all right this is good right um so yeah we did that with the redux let's just turn that off for now um let's maybe think about some other things that we could use what about the grain delay let's try it with the grain delay which is a, a kind of Pitch shifting delay, which has been mildly super, super superseded by shifter, um, which ki kind of has its own delay feedback network thing going on it. I won't be looking at that today. Maybe I will. Grain delay. Let's look at grain delay. It's a classic. And if you stick it in the feedback loop with a load of filters, you can get like crazy stuff. Still going. Listen, I can just bring that back in like that. Amazing. Let's increase the pitch on this. So it's going to go up in pitch 
as it feeds back. Running out of space a little bit. short delay time. Let's turn sync off. Turn that feedback up really high. Yeah. Turn this random pitch up a bit. Let's make it go a bit wibbly wobbly woo. like some sort of weird kind of I have no words <laughs> Okay right I need to I need to really stop getting carried away Okay so that's the <laughs> thing on let's just bring it back let's put it before the grain delay maybe Actually, things are actually feeding back right now. Oh my goodness me! You just make little laser sounds. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, this is good. Another guzzle. What about like the the phaser flanger? Let's put that in. This this is probably going to get a little bit much. Let's turn this grain delay and this redux off for now. See what we got with something like.
I'm just getting lost. I just can't stop tweaking all the things. Uh, the phaser flanger wasn't that great. Um, uh, no, let's maybe, um, what about like some vibrato? I mean, we can obviously kind of modulate our delay all we want and it's going to wibble wobble. Um, but what about if we put like some vibrato on it? See what that's like. stay focused okay <laughs> like keep just getting lost in its in its wonders uh what else have we got here there's got to be some other stuff um what about the the spectral time <laughs> let's put the spectral time in the feedback loop and see what happens Right now, nothing. I mean, that kind of just sounds like what it sounds like when you use it. It's not particularly... Yeah, not really that great, actually. Whoa! Some of them have a little bit of kind of like... 80s Transformers sounds. <laughs> that sort of shit that you would get in uh, E-Man and those other things. Uh, what else have we got here? Well, we've done the filter. The I mean, you can obviously try it with various types of EQs. Let's see what erosion's like. Kind of like the redux, but slightly more subtle. Let's turn that off. Feed it back. Like someone eating an apple very fast. <laughs> or brushing their teeth, maybe. Ooh. Quite nice. I'm just going to go through all the effects until I get bored. Um, what about the hybrid reverb? Maybe with that shimmer on. We can get like extreme shimmer by feeding the shimmer back into itself. Is that going to still keep going? Still going, yeah.
really been doing any actual echoes. I've just been jamming, riding these mad feedback waves. Got to catch those waves, man. All right, let's have a look at a couple more things before I move on to the next bit. Um, let's try Shifter with... Um, Shifter on the frequency or frequency and ring mod and just see what that's like. get a little bit more kind of interesting in terms of um, ways that we can maybe sort of this sort of make this like an automated process because I kind of set up my little APC mini here to to jam along with it but you can't see that and um, it's not the best controller in the world anyway so let's see if we can make this kind of like a little bit more automated so what I'm going to do then is I'll keep my delete all of these oh not those ones okay I'm going to keep my low pass and the high pass here and I'm going to try and use, what could I use? Let's maybe, okay, I'm going to do like a little thing with this beat repeat. I'm going to use the beat repeat as kind of like a gate for what's coming in. Um, so I'm going to set it to gate. Let's see if I can work this out. So probably want it here because that's where the snare is. And I generally want to send the snare into the echo. Is this working? Oh. Yeah. Okay. But it's... <laughs> it's like late. <laughs> okay, never mind. Oh, it's because it's in 12, is it? You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to maybe see if I can use the expression control to just map that send with a MIDI note that's got some chance on it. So let's pull in expression control and let's draw in like a clip. See if I can get this working. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter what note it is. Or maybe the MIDI envelope might be better, actually, rather than expression control. Let's try that MIDI envelope. Where is that? Envelope MIDI. Is this it? This is it, I think. Let's try this. Yeah. All right, let's map that MIDI note to that send and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. So every time that that MIDI note comes in, it flicks up that send there according to this envelope. I've never used this before. This is cool. Look at that. Although it's not going quite all the way. It's just, but that's not so bad. Okay, so let's add some probability to that. 
And in fact, let's put another one here. Let's have like one for the kick and one for the snare. Let's pull the probability right down. Just under 30%. <laughs> We're gonna get delicious. Because the whole the whole point about it is that you're not doing it constantly. You're just doing it's very kind of casual. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, man, I might throw that in there. No, I've changed my mind. Maybe in a minute, I don't know. Am I having too much fun? Okay, so now maybe we can get something to make these just do stuff by themselves. Just use the LFO on the on the filters. Let's try that. Yes. Yes. I can feel it. Maybe I might just do one final low pass, or rather a high pass actually, on the end. Maybe just with this channel EQ. Let's pull that down a bit there like that. So it's, oh, there it goes. It's doing it. It's doing its job. Okay, let's put this back to threes. Okay, let's duplicate this. All right, we can't. All right, let's make a new return track. And we're just going to copy all of this stuff to this return track. And we'll enable all the sends. Well, actually, we'll just enable send B. All right, we'll enable them all. Okay, fine. And then I'll make a copy of this. But on this one, we're going to map to send B. Which is going to have a different delay time. Maybe with some panning here. Yeah. Should have put, should have done a baseline. Maybe I'll just do a baseline. Right now. Where's operator? There we go. live it's not live but i don't edit <laughs> just hanging out you all right let's maybe just tighten this up a little bit oh not like that 16th notes damn it okay i'm gonna give these some chance as well Chance on bass notes. Yeah. Where are my hi hats? Yeah, these ones. Let's put some chance on those as well. Let's just pull everything back just a little bit. Yeah. So I might just put a little delay on here just to sort of, just a single, yeah. Okay, 
now I'm going to I'm going to put a compressor on the master. I'm going to do the glue. I like this uh, this make it loud thing. <laughs> it's uh, it's I like it very much. Very nice. Probably probably shouldn't do it, but I don't care. I'm having a nice time. Okay, my dub echoes have gone a bit naff, probably because I've pulled that high pass down too. Maybe we can send like more. Let's increase the release on these envelopes. Yeah, that's better. Now it's taking slower to. Yeah, that's good. Let's do that for this one as well. Okay, I'm going to make more return tracks. And then more of these MIDI triggered dubs. Um, this one will send to that one. Let's fire that off. And then let's maybe put something, maybe something a bit more reverby with time. Maybe let's try just the normal reverb. Yeah. Okay, that's. release is too much I think yeah that's good yeah okay limiter on here because we're gonna make this reverb sing or scream depending on what what have I done oh no I don't want it there I want it here okay then that dry wet up a little bit okay let's feed this back into itself go on Give me a reverb dub. Go on, do it. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to wait for it to do it. Yeah. reverb on my voice maybe it's just the room maybe i'm just hallucinating dub echoes okay let's bring this normal delay in i'm gonna try and make a sort of let's mute all these other ones i'm gonna try and make like a sort of ping pong sound with a really short delay And then I'm going to group them together. I'm going to have another one. I'm going to duplicate this one. This one's going to have a slightly different time. Yeah. And then this one's going to have a slightly different time. So it's this one. This one. This one's going to have a slightly different time as well. Turn the dry wet up on all of them. It's not really a spring ring verb. <laughs> But it's got that sort of, I don't know, it's like a crap guitar amp spring reverbs. We can filter it before the chain. Smear it, that's what I wanted to say. Smear it with like a bit of reverb before it goes in. Yeah, it's not 
quite a spring. It's just sort of a weird reverb. I don't know. Just a weird reverb. Because that's all digital reverbs are, really, aren't they? They're just loads and loads of delays that are kind of doing very, very clever stuff. And I've just done a stupid one. Okay, so now we need our thing. What have I done? Oh, I need to do another one here. Let's do another. No, not that. Let's duplicate this track and route this track, this envelope MIDI thing to send D on our drums. Create, uh, do enable all sends here. Wow, that's a bit much. I muted all the other ones. Let's do it. Bring them back. Right, that that reverb is is dangerous. velocity on the MIDI here. Let's select all of these. Turn them down, turn the range up, and maybe bring them up again about halfway. Uh, set the voices to one. Retrigger the envelope, and then I'm going to assign time to velocity about 50%. So maybe some of them will cut off and some of them might ring out a little bit. Just to see. I'll, I'll bet I won't even notice it doing anything in five minutes. Yeah. Maybe let's put the LFO on these feedbacks. Although they don't sound as good as the sends. Let's try it on the sends. Let's make um, a couple of tracks here to put LFOs on all of these sends. Let's get the LFO in. How's my CPU? Perfectly fine. Let's put a C uh, LFO here. Map that to that really slow set it to random and turn the smooth up so it just kind of waves around sort of sometimes doing nothing sometimes going all the way up okay that's pretty good let's duplicate this but this one will map to that send duplicate that again this one will map to that send this one, delete that, duplicate that, map that to that send. Yeah. Yeah. Probably need like a little. Goodness me. I'm gonna right, this is what I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna group this. I'm gonna do something a little strange. I'm gonna use I'm gonna do two separate bits of instrumentation in one MIDI clip because this is all sliced and these these will start at whatever that whatever that note is, I can't see. But if I do like some notes an octave lower, maybe just do a little organ stab thing. Don't really have any organ sounds, do I? Let's do a search. Organ. What organs do we have? Piano keys. Oh, that'll do. That's fine. That's too high. 
Okay, I'm going to need to pitch that up because it's it's the octave beneath. Um, where are we? MIDI effects. Let's put this here. Let's go up um, plus two octaves. No, I went down. Oh, let's go 24 plus 24. No, we're going to need to go 48. Mm, one octave higher. Uh, what's one octave higher than that? Hang on a minute. 48, 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. So I can just draw in underneath these drums. This is a very, I wouldn't recommend doing this at all. This is a silly idea, but I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe I can record over. Oh my goodness me. Right, we're going to need to come out of that key zone. Yeah. Wow, the dub echo got excited. Yeah, there we go. So we just we just want to be in this octave here. So maybe I can record into this clip. I can't hear it though. Why can't I hear it? Anyway, worry about that in a minute. Let's quantize, quantize all of that. Come on now. Okay. That do that. Okay, why can't I hear? Oh, did I go down an octave too low? There we go. Okay, they're all a little not right. Um. So Oh, you know what? In an old version of Ableton, they would all they would all go down like that, and then when you'd extend them out, they'd all be the same length. So I've got to hit legato. Oh my god! I swear in live four, this is much easier. There we go. That was a stupid. I should have just pulled it a new instrument, but I just thought because they're all being dubbed, the drums are being dubbed. Let's select all of these. Pull the charts down. <laughs> and just a little bit of high pass on this organ. Not what I'm doing yet, basic organ. Look at it, just dubbing away, doing its own thing. Ableton, sentient dub. Put some note echo on that MIDI chord. Hey, yeah, go do it.
sounds. This is good. This was a good idea. I'm glad I did this. Yeah. Okay, some of these LFOs are maybe going down a little bit too low and there's just not really enough dub happening. So I'm going to set the minimum on all of them to about 25%. should all calm down when you stop of course if that doesn't happen i don't really know you're just going to hope for the best so there you go that's something that you can do with dub echoes you can create mad feedback loops and put anything you want in the feedback loop and create all these wonderful weird things and then uh, use them in your music and i'm kind of tired now I feel like i've gone on a bit of a journey so I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon now where you will be able to download it if you decide to sign up for that. If not, then just go away and copy this. If you fancy liking the video and subscribing, that's, that, that's always good too. Okay, dub. Dub it up. Yeah. Okay, thanks. See you next time. Bye.